Hey everybody, it's Ripley again. We're gonna I, I'm gonna do lectures for for two separate sections because really these can be consolidated into into one section, but it's just one really long one. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you guys how to solve some of these types of problems. A trig equation is just an equation. For example, I don't know two sine theta. Let's just pull one out of our ear right now. Plus one equals zero. Okay, now I'm going to do this a couple of ways. I'm going to do this as, let's go on the closed interval from 0 to 2 pi. Okay, so I'm going to solve it this way first. Now, it, as you can probably imagine, all I'm going to do is, I'm going to solve for sine theta. Really, the, the only variable in this equation is theta. So just like every other algebraic equation that we've ever solved for, the idea is to isolate the variable. So I get 2 sine theta, if I subtract 1 from both sides, equals negative 1. So I get sine of theta equals negative 1 half. Now, we've got to be real careful here, because remember, <clears throat> if we just follow the end of our nose and we pick up the idiot box and we start punching buttons, all hell's going to break loose pretty quickly. Because watch, if I go theta equals the inverse sine, of negative a half. Well, let's think about that. When does that happen? Well, if I plug it in my calculator, right, if I plug it in my calculator, what I'm going to get is I'm going to get negative pi six. There's only one problem. Notice that this interval is from zero to two pi. Now, my calculator spat this thing out, and sure enough, it's the correct answer, but, or it's one of the correct answers, but we're in trouble. Remember, sine, think about what sine looks like from 0 to 2 pi. It looks like this. Now, we're looking, we're trying to figure out based on this right here, whoops, based on this right here, I'm looking to figure out when it equals negative a half, right? Negative 1 half. Well, here's my first quadrant, my second quadrant, my third quadrant, and my fourth quadrant. It's going to hit it. It's going to hit the function right here and right here. But my calculator spit out negative pi 6. Well, that's not even in the interval from 0 to 2 pi, is it? So what do I do? How do I do this? Well, the way to think about it is, remember, sine comes down here. Whoop, whoa, hard to see. It comes down right here. So to get from here to here, from this value right here all the way over to this value right here, that's easy. Just add 2 pi to it. So if I'm solving for between 0 and 2 pi, and I get negative pi 6, which isn't in the interval, I know it's actually going to be theta equals negative pi 6 plus 2 pi, which is effectively known as 11 pi 6. So that takes care of this guy right here. The question is, how about this one? Well, there's lots of ways we can figure this out. The easiest way for me is to think in terms of the unit circle, right? We know at negative pi 6, so this is, this is theta equals negative pi 6, which is coterminal with 11 pi 6. Remember, all students take calculus. Well, that's going to correspond to the same value over here. So this, this angle measure, I need to change colors here. The, the value of this angle right here is pi 6. I know that the value of this angle is pi, right, halfway around the circle. So the other value that I would get would be theta equals pi plus pi 6, affectionately known as 7 pi 6. So it's not as easy as we might think. That's really tricky, isn't it? I pick up the idiot box. I mean, life told me that, that, that I pick up my calculator whenever I'm in trouble. And guess what? It spits out a wrong answer. Why? Because it's not on the interval. Okay? So we have to bring it all together. We have to be able to use our calculator to come up with values, think about the mother graph to, to figure out what that does, and then use our unit circle trigs all three of these things need to happen simultaneously. Now, what would happen if I said, okay, 2 sine theta plus 1 equals 0 for all reals? So now the, the interval is from, from negative infinity to infinity. Well, this actually gets slightly easier because all I have to do is I solve. I, in the same situation, I know that theta equals the inverse sine of negative a half, right? And this time when I hit my calculator, when I punch it in my calculator, I do get negative pi six, right? 
whoops, as opposed to negative pi pi s, which is negative 1. What a thing, though. All right, so sorry. <laughs> negative pi 6. All right, now we also know that that's 11 pi 6. We also know that if I took 11 pi 6 and added 2 pi to it, what would that be? Another 12, that'd be 23 pi 6. If I took negative pi 6 and subtracted 2 pi, because remember, every 2 pi, no matter which direction I'm going, I'm going to pick this value. I'm going to hit it at 11 pi 6, 23 pi 6, 35 pi 6, et cetera, et cetera. I'm also going to hit it at negative pi 6. What? Ne uh, 12, negative 11, wait, 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 negative... Yeah. Oh, I got to be careful here. Negative pi 6 minus, so what's that? Negative 13 pi 6, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so how do I solve for it if we're talking about all reals? Easy. I'm just going to add 2 pi times k. We've done this before. Nothing to it. That picks up every single one of those values, whether I'm going around this way or I'm going around this way. All right, it's, it's very, very simple. Now, careful though, we only got this value, just like before, we got ourselves a little trap. Now I have to concern myself with this value, and I can think of that as either 7 pi 6, or what's another way to think about it? Isn't that the same as negative 5 pi 6? Remember, negative 5 pi 6 gets me around this way, and that's coterminal with positive 7 pi 6. So, I, I have another value. It's completely up to you. I can either write it as 7 pi 6 plus 2 pi k, or I can write it as negative 5 pi 6 plus 2 pi k, etc., etc. Okay? That's a fun one, huh? That's not so bad. How about let's do, let's do, uh, I don't know, I don't want one with, uh, let's do one with tangent in it, or cotangent. Let's go square root of 3. I'm going to change the color of my pens. This, this thing's just obnoxious. All right. So where are we? Make this thing black. All right, the square root of 3 cotan of theta. Um, let's go plus 1 equals 0. And let's do it same as before. We're going to talk about uh, from 0 to 2 pi. Okay? So just like before, I'm going to get the cotan of theta. Is the root 3 cotan theta equals negative 1 cotan of theta equals negative 1 over root 3, which is negative root 3 thirds. Hmm. Let's see. When does that happen? Well, I don't know. Let's see. Root 3 thirds. What's cotan? So we can play with this a number of ways. I know that cotan is cos theta over sine theta. So if I'm just trying to do this thing in my head, I can, I can look at it and go, oh, okay, when is, that was when it was, what, 1 over root 3. Hold on just a sec. Okay, sorry about that. You guys, somebody was knocking at the door, interrupted me. All right, where were we? Okay, so cos theta over sine theta. Now, this is going to take all my powers. If I'm going to do this thing in my head, now the first thing I'm always going to do is I'm going to think in terms of 1 half over um, root 3 over 2, right? Because that's how you end up with 1 over root 3, right? True? Which is the same thing as root 3 thirds. But the problem is, all right, let's build our, just like we did before, all students take calculus. Oh, by the way, when is the cosine of theta equal to 1 half? Well, that's pretty easy. That's when it's at theta equals pi thirds. Same thing with sine of theta equals root 3 halves. Again, that's at pi thirds. But the problem is, is this is a negative root 3 over 3. So I got to look here. Okay, everything's positive in the first quadrant. Tangent and cotangent are positive in the third quadrant. So whatever's going on here is happening in the, the second and the fourth quadrant. All right, so what's it going to be? Well, it's not going to be pi thirds, but it's going to be 2 pi thirds, right, if I split this thing up. So if I take theta equals the inverse cotan, which I don't even have on my calculator, so I'm going to have to, to a certain degree, do this thing, <clears throat> excuse me, in my head, I end up with, now, what's going to happen? It's either going to have me in the fourth quadrant, or it's going to have me in the second quadrant. Remember, the range of inverse cotangent is from 0 to pi, so it's going to spit me out 
in my second quadrant. And it's, so it's going to end up being 2 pi thirds, right? However, there's a problem. I mean, think about this. I need all the values from 0 to 2 pi. Now, I may think to myself, wait, it's also going to be, theta is also going to be negative pi thirds, right? Because positive pi thirds is going to be positive. We know that it's, it's negative in the fourth quadrant, so it's going to give me negative pi thirds. But yet again, that's not going to help me because i got to be between 0 and 2 pi. Well, that's easy enough. Just add, if I add pi to it, I get to this value. But if I add 2 pi to it, remember the period of cotangent is pi. If I add pi to this guy, think of this guy as being negative pi thirds plus pi. Now, if I add another pi to it, won't that get me to a value in the fourth quadrant if I open it up this way? This is exactly the same thing as taking 2 pi thirds and adding pi to it. So if I get 2 pi thirds, that gets me here. And then if I add another pi to it, it gets me in that fourth quadrant, right? So this is just 5 pi thirds, all right? Now, here's the cool part. Watch this. Remember, the period of cotangent is pi. So let's say that I do exactly the same problem, cotan theta plus 1 equals 0. Only now I'm going to do it for all reals. Okay, so again, I end up with in exactly the same spot. I end up with theta equals uh, the inverse cotan of negative one root one over root three, which is the same thing as negative root three thirds, right? Now, here's the best part. If it's for all reals, then all I have to do is start at one of my values. Might as well start at two pi thirds because that's what my calculator would have spit out for me, right? I get two. That's just a terrible looking pi. I end up with two pi thirds. 2 pi thirds, but because the period's pi, watch this, I just have to go plus pi k, and it picks everything up. Remember over here, I had to, I, I had to figure out the negative pi 6 and the 7 pi 6 and add 2 pi k to each one of those for this one because I pick up all values. Now, think about what cotan looks like. Remember, it looks like this. That's really badly drawn, but bear with me. It looks like this. It's got a period. This is 0. This is pi. This is negative pi. And really what we just did is we figured out when this is negative root 3 over thirds. When cotan of theta runs into, I well, we might as well call this y, right? Runs into y equals negative root 3 thirds. And it was here. And it was here. Right? But we actually had to do it one more time way out here because I needed to be between 0 and 2 pi out here. That's pretty cool, huh? I really, really enjoy these problems. We'll do some more. I'll see you in a second.